Hello my loves and welcome back or welcome if this is your first time on my channel. Today I wanted to jump back into a topic that I've touched on on my channel in the past, just going a little bit into some more detail to share my full process for printing quality, accurate archival art prints at home. If you're interested in a really in-depth video walkthrough on how I scan, edit and prepare my work for prints, I have a full demo of that on Patreon, which I will have linked below. But generally, the bare bones of what you need to know about that is that I use a Canon Canascan LIDE 300 scanner. I scan between 300 and 600 DPI, and when I'm adjusting the scan in Photoshop, I work in a CMYK workspace and I make sure to export with those color settings as well. Now, when I'm printing at home, I export my images as JPEGs purely because that is one of the only file types that is accepted by the printing software that I use. And I personally have found the sharpest and most color accurate results in my prints when I use that software. So with that, let's get into software and hardware. My printer is the Epson Expression Photo X. P970 and I previously used the 960 which is the older model before this one and it was great it was everything I needed it just got to the point where it had printed too many things I believe after about five years of quite heavy use I print at least 200 to 300 prints a month for Patreon and after several years of that my old printer just said I'm tired, I'm done. So I upgraded to the next model up. It's exactly the same, it's just a little bit newer. And I chose this printer because it prints up to A3 size, it offers double-sided printing, and it also does borderless printing, which is really useful. Um, it takes really quality inks that last up to 300 years without fading, and it just has lots of great reviews from other artists and photographers who have used it. They've mentioned the accuracy, um, the richness of the colors, the highlights, shadows the sharpness of the prints that you can get um i will say it's not like the fastest or quietest printer and i'm sure that there are plenty of other great options out there uh, but those are just the general qualities in a printer that i think you should be looking for regardless of the brand or model that you choose before we go on i just want to pop in with a quick word from our sponsor skillshare i've been taking classes with skillshare for years now to improve my art and my business and even just my lifestyle and a class i believe i've mentioned before is cat coquelette's class on print on demand success that i think anyone who is interested in selling their art would appreciate as she goes into actually making the art and preparing and marketing Focusing it to sell and another couple of classes that I think would be really invaluable to anyone hoping to start earning or earning more from selling their art or turning their hobby into a career would first be Tiffany Emery's Etsy launch how to open an Etsy shop like a professional seller and also Amaryllis Henderson's class setting up shop sell fantastic prints which goes into the ins and outs of branding order fulfillment and even photographing your work and I'll have those classes linked below if you're interested and the first people to use my link or use the code mini small will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. If you're new to Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thousands of online classes that you can watch ad free to make the most of a fully focused learning session as you explore new skills. I've mentioned before that the entire catalogue of classes is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German, but I just think that is such a brilliant and useful feature to give even more people access to the quality premium classes that launch every single week. So again, don't forget to check out my link below and see what you can learn from the classes I mentioned and all of the other classes that you you can find on Skillshare to boost your creativity and your career. Now back to printing. The inks I use are Epson's own brand of inks for this printer. I have said it before, I don't know if it's a scam, the price of these inks definitely feels like a scam, but it does make sense that the inks that they make are designed and formulated to work best with their printers. So I just choose not to mess around with that. I also know from experience that these inks do hold up well. They don't tend to smudge depending on what paper I'm printing on and um, like how long I've left them to dry. And also depending on the colors that I use, a set of these inks will usually last me for maybe around 500, either five by seven to A4 printed sheets of paper. Speaking of paper, one of the most important things that I have learned about printing at home is just the difference in quality that you can get just from choosing the right surface to print on. The Epson archival matte paper has always been one of my favorites for prints. I also love Bockingford's watercolor inkjet paper. Um, it has a really lovely texture to it. The colors come out beautifully on it. And there have been so many times that I've printed on this paper 
and ended up preferring the print to the original painting. When I'm looking for paper, I usually search for archival inkjet paper and then I'll get more specific on top of that with like the finish of the paper depending on what I'm printing what I want it for so I might search for glossy archival inkjet or matte or silk and I tend to go for brands that I already know brands that already make paper that I like so Bockingford, Canson, Han Merler which I'll never be able to pronounce and I will leave links below to everything that I talk about in this video but finding the right paper can be a bit of trial and error once you find it though your print quality just skyrockets. I have printed on cheaper paper in the past and things come out faded and not very sharp. Uh, also, if you're having trouble even with higher quality paper, make sure you're printing on the right side because these papers are specially treated to take ink in a certain way. And so if you're printing on the back of the page, it might not give you the same quality as you would get from the front. So coming to software, I use the Epson Easy Photo Print software. I find the files that I want to print. I input the quantity, the size of the print, the size of the border, if any. Uh, I will choose the paper type and the print quality and also where I want the printer to get the paper from. There are three different sections for paper in this printer. So I usually use the rear paper tray for larger prints or for small fiddly ones that the inside of the printer can't pick up properly. Um, then the bottom tray I almost always have A4 paper in, and then for postcard size prints or 557 I use the middle tray. So I just specify on this software which part of the printer I want the paper to be collected from for each print. Um, it can actually detect it automatically, you can set the setting to auto and the printer will figure out where to choose the paper from on its own. I just prefer to know that it's going to use the right paper for the right prints every time. Now this software is a bit old and a little bit clunky um, and as I said you can only really print JPEGs and they can't be too big in file size. However, I have tried a million different ways of printing my art at home from different settings printing directly from Photoshop to exporting as TIFFs or PDFs and this method using JPEGs in the Epson software has consistently given me the best results. If anyone else knows of a better way or a newer Epson software please let us all know but honestly this works for me just fine. The only other thing I would say about printing your art at home is Think about if it's worth it. For me, I love doing limited runs of signed prints for my shop and I use my printer to make a batch of limited edition prints for Patreon each and every month, but I wouldn't make and sell prints of all of my work all of the time like this. For me, it makes much more sense to have my work on imprint for people to have access to high quality prints of my work at all times that I don't actually have to print and pack and send out to people every time an order comes in. When I'm printing my work at home, and this might just be a me thing, I prefer to work in batches to know that I'm doing a certain amount of prints, so I need a certain amount of paper and a certain amount of ink. And I will print them all at once, and once they're gone, they're gone. But also using a print-on-demand service alongside that allows people to still get their hands on my work, even if I don't actively have anything in my shop at the time. So I think it's worth weighing up the time that goes into creating your own prints, the expenses like paper, ink, the printer itself, and the markup that you would have to sell them at to make a profit. Also the advantages of printing your own work, like being able to adjust it down to the minutest detail, experimenting with different paper and the finishes that you'll get from that, and being able to add personal touches like a signature and your own packaging, which I suppose you could also do by outsourcing your printing, like having a batch of prints made elsewhere then shipped to you and then you package them and ship them when people order them. So weigh up all the options, consider whether the cost and the stress of temperamental printers, because there is always, there's always something that goes wrong with printers and it's always something different every time. Just work out if the pros outweigh the cons for you and consider your other options like using print on demand services like Imprint or sending your work out to be printed elsewhere like with awesome merchandise, um, printed.com and tons of other places, a lot of which will offer um, really quality Giclée art printing services as well, which I don't even know if you can do that at home. Or like me, you can just do a little bit of all three. Um, let me know if you have any questions on anything that I've talked about today and feel free to suggest any other videos that you'd like to see from me. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.